Okay, so I forgot to do the explaining each component for the hydraulic system. So the hydraulic pump is a variable displacement axial piston pump with load sense and pressure control. They are all linked by pressure compensating load sense system. The main the big components here are the I have orbital steering, loader operation, and the service brakes. Uh, and pin disconnect and ride control. Uh, electric drive that we don't have that. Design features include a closed center loader control valve, a single load sensing circuit providing flow priority to steering functions, a loader function metering independent of work port load. Uh, when a steering valve is actuated, the steering valve or port pressure is sent out as a load sense to the loader control valve. And then the shuttle check valves and the loader control valve route loader function work port pressures with steering load sense pressure. Then the, you want me to explain the, one second. Control valve consists of a load sense differential valve and a pressure cutoff valve. Both valve spools are actually adjustable. With all hydraulic functions in neutral, the pump outlet pressure acts at, against the pressure cutoff spring and differential pressure. Then the pilot manifold. Functions to supply loader functions, filament valves, and the pilot oil to engage loader functions. So it holds the spools basically like a centering spring. Priority between the pilot control and loader function or steering. High pressure oil from the main hydraulic pump enters the inlet section and pressure is reduced through the pressure reducing valve. The pressure charges the pilot accumulator. Once the accumulator is fully charged, pressure buildup closes the pressure reducing valve, cutting off main hydraulic pressure until loader other loader function is actuated. So when the pilot enable boom down switch on the SSM is enabled, the pilot enable solenoid shifts, allowing pilot accumulator pressurized pilot oil to flow through an activated loader function solenoid valve and shift the loader function spool valve as needed. And then as the pilot accumulator charge is released, the pressure reducing valve opens, allowing the hydraulic pump pressure to briefly shift. And the loader service brake are opera operated by load sensing, I believe and pressure compensated. It's a closed center hydraulic system. Flow is supplied by the main hydraulic pump once again. Pressure to the service brake system varies from neutral to maximum system pressure. The load sense relief valve in the hydraulic main pump limits the pressure spikes. And then the boom section. If you operate it, it sends pilot oil to, this is with all the sections, whatever you want to operate, it sends pilot oil to one end cap, and it pushes the valve that direction, which sends high pressure to the piston end of the uh, cylinder, which allows it to go up, and then rod end, it allows it to go down. Same thing for the bucket, auxiliary, and all of that. And then the main relief valve, it 
the loader hydraulic system uses it's a direct acting relief valve located on the inlet section of the loader control valve assembly it is its function is to relieve pressure spikes that result from abrupt abrupt flow changes during normal operation loader medium pressure oil is lower than the relief valve pressure settings the floating seat remain seated against the poppet, sealing the inlet from the return passage. And then the load sense is a load sense relief valve is a direct acting poppet type design located in the outlet section. The load sense relief function is to limit the maximum load sense oil pressure provided by the hydraulic system, setting a limit on load sense oil pressure also places a limit on main hydraulic pump output or system pressure and then the circuit relief valve uh, during normal operation the poppet is positioned against the poppet seat to seal the work port oil from the outlet as the circuit pressure increases, it pushes it off that pocket, basically. And then it, there's grooves cut in it to bleed oil on the side of the pin past the pilot poppet and return to passage. And then anti-cavitation. Uh, the boom section of the lutter control valve contains an anti-cavitation valve in the boom down work port uh, if work port pressure in the circuit drops lower than return oil pressure the anti-cavitation valve opens and return oil flows into the work port during normal operation the pop is held against the seat by spring force plus work port pressure acting on the back side of the poppet with the poppet seated the work port is sealed from the return passage and now, ride, ride control allows the boom to float relative to the loader frame for a smoother ride, indicates ride control. The ride control valve connects the boom head ports to the ride control accumulator, giving the boom head end hydraulic compliance and allowing movement rod ends are connected to tank, eliminating restriction of the rod side while head end is transferring flow to and from the accumulator and then that's the ride control switch right here